We're coming down from a big solar storm that brought aurora as far south as Wyoming and Colorado in the United States. And what's more, there are three more storms on the way. How will this affect you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week has gotten crazy busy, and it's all thanks to regions 2740 and 2741. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see them both here, and they've been doing exactly what we expected them to, firing solar storm after solar storm. Wham, bam, wham, bam. It's almost been ceaseless. We've already gotten hit by several of these solar storms that have brought an aurora clear down to mid-latitudes and gave us a G3 level storm. And guess what? We've got two, possibly three more on the way that are earth directed that are expected to hit us around the 15th and the 16th so this is fantastic for solar minimum because we don't usually get stuff like this of course now as we switch to our backside sun well the picture's a little bit more like what we'd expect you can see the kind of the remnant of those regions leaving stereo's west limb view there and then behind it what do you see pretty much a sleepy sun. So once we get through these regions, which will be affecting us for probably another five to seven days and boosting that solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders and giving us these wonderful solar storms that allow Aurora photographers to have some fun. Well, after that, it looks like we've got at least one week, maybe two weeks of quiet. Now, taking a closer look at the solar storms that are on their way to Earth now, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you can see the first two so those solar storms being launched towards Earth. As a matter of fact, they look like they're going to be direct hits. The first one should hit Earth early in the morning or on the 15th and could last about a day. And no sooner than we calm down from that one, then we get wham, hit by a second storm. It also looks like it's dead center direct hit for Earth, and that could keep us storming for another day at least. Now, as we switch, and I put up the ESA version of the model, this is actually done by the Mosswalk in the UK. They've actually run all three solar storms, and you can see the first and the second two kind of kind of mush together. So we could be hitting, getting storming here easily over the next 24 to 48 hours, possibly even almost three days before storming calms down and this is great news for aurora photographers because we could definitely see more aurora down to mid latitudes switching to our moon we are now passing through the full moon phase with a full moon being on the 19th and the night sky watchers and aurora watchers well you're going to have that bright moon to contend with over the next few nights so you need to check your local rise and set times Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from the two, possibly three solar storms that are on their way to Earth now. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions, in fact, up to about a 75% chance of a major storm. And these conditions will continue easily through the 17th and possibly the 18th before things begin to finally calm down. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions, but we have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm possibility. And this is probably the best chance we've had to see Aurora all year. So Aurora photographers definitely keep your batteries charged and you GPS users definitely know that you could have issues if you're anywhere near Aurora with GPS. So drone pilots be aware. It could be an issue easily through the 18th before things finally calm down. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have regions 2740 and 2741 still on the Earth-facing disk, but they are quieting down when it comes to flare activity. So you GPS users, you should be very happy on Earth's day side because there's no risk for radio blackouts. The nice thing, though, is that these regions are still boosting the solar flux. We're still in the mid-70s, and that means March marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, and that should keep amateur radio and emergency responders quite happy. And these conditions will continue easily over the next week before these regions begin to rotate out of view. Now also because we are at solar minimum, we are getting a higher cosmic ray flux than we normally would have. So all you uh, frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you guys are in the marginal range for radiation 
vaccination dose, and this does include you prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has gotten crazy busy. We've already seen a G3 level solar storm over the past few days, and we have three more solar storms that are incoming, if you can believe that. So Aurora photographers, this could be the best chance all year to catch Aurora. And as a matter of fact, during the solar minimum sun, I'm not sure when we're gonna get another chance to see it quite this good. So be sure to keep your batteries charged. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, these regions 27 and 2741 sure have brightened your day. The solar flux continues to stay in the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side, and you will continue to enjoy these conditions over the next probably week or so before things begin to fall back off the map. Also, on Earth's night side, make sure you catch the auroral propagation because we're going to have so much aurora, I think, over the next few days from these solar storms. So enjoy. Now, as far as your GPS users are concerned, Concerned. Well, on Earth's day side, reception should look pretty good for you guys. There shouldn't be any issues there. The issue comes on the night side with these solar storms. So make sure you stay away from Aurora and you stay away from dawn and dusk because those could be where your reception issues become a problem. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.